Trust is with 
So could you please find your seats? We're going to be starting in a few minutes after this. brothers and sisters, would you please stand? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. In the waters of baptism, Kathleen died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May she now share with him eternal glory. Man is lonely, my bird. Man is only a pilgrim. 
Or to be king, time is but a temporary thing, only on loan of my Lord Earth. Like the wind in the tree, man is made the red mass and free. Thrown far and wide, he wants to settle down beside the stream, flowing through eternity. Like the grass on the No return, time is always moving on. Man is longing for one, for a song, and a place in the sun, a home up above, where every day is lived in love for rest when the journey is done. Man is lonely by birth, man is lonely. I want you to close your eyes. And in the closing of your eyes, I want you to see Kathleen right here with us. My brothers and sisters, we have come together to renew our trust in Christ. who by dying on the cross has freed us from eternal death and by rising has opened the gates of heaven. Let us pray for Kathleen that she may share in Christ's victory and let us pray for ourselves that the Lord may grant us the gift of his loving consolation. Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated now. We do have the eulogy and some tributes. Father, Siobhan, family members, friends, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Lucretia, Kathleen, Josephine Maynard was born on the 23rd of March in 1959 to Kenneth Maynard and Constance Dennison Nee Pelham Braffitt, now Constance Dennison. She was, he was, a tiny baby. She was born in Port of Spain General Hospital. And she remained slim all of her life. Her nickname, which was known by everyone, was Kay. Her nickname given to her by our mother, however, was Squilly Bee because she was so tiny. Mommy, I know you wanted to be here, but you are physically unable to be here. Kay knows your heart. And surely, as Jesus knew his father hanging on the cross, she knows that you are with her. 
we feel your presence here with us today. As a baby, my mom and dad got regular exercise since right after having her baby bottle, Kay would deposit it through the window outside of the house. We were told that she eventually ventured outside of the house later on when she became a toddler and she grew up. But that was for the purpose of holding hands of the son of the Sinanans who, left, who lived next door to us. What can I say? She started early. Of course, being her younger brother, we fought. It's a rite of passage between brothers and sisters. I'm convinced to this day that when my dad renovated our house in the 1970s, he put the kids' bedroom, or bedrooms, on a separate wing of the house with a door that separated those bedrooms from the rest of the house. Many a time, Kay's words echoed throughout the house. Daddy, speak to Junior. That was my nickname. Daddy dutifully ignored her requests and always let his children work out their differences and learn to respect and love one another rather than doling out punishments. This worked well for me because our older sister, Alicia, frequently, not always, but frequently came to my aid. Excellent parent skills, Dad. Now you have three daughters in heaven preparing a place for you. But don't rush. My sisters are there for eternity. You have kids here on earth that need you for another 10 to 20 years. Once when I was a baby, Alicia was about five, Kay was about three, Daddy was leaving on one of his uh, trips overseas. Poor Alicia was crying her eyes out. Madame Kay, however, re retorted, what are you crying about? Daddy will soon come back. And then proceeded to teach and beat the front steps as if the front steps were misbehaving children. That was my sister Kay. Fast forward to adulthood. I remember when Kay was pregnant with Siobhan and our mother told me about it and so I called Kay. She said that there were few things that she wanted to accomplish in life and motherhood was one of them. Siobhan, well before you were born, your mother wanted you and waited for you. She waited for the day that she would become your mother and that you would become her daughter. I know that you're fully aware that you were a blessing from God to her. You were the center of her life. You were her heart. She lived her life trying to be the type of mother you needed her to be. From what I've experienced of your relationship as your godfather, I believe that she not only embraced that blessing, but that she fulfilled that dream. And only you can determine what lasting love, care, and embracing impact her motherly love 
will have on your life hereafter. He lived, I would say, a relatively short life. But it was a full life. She graduated from St. Joseph's Convent in San Fernando, where she made many lifelong friends, some of whom I, I've already seen here today, and many of whom are listening and watching us uh, by stream. She was a very private person, but she remained in touch with a lot of her close friends, some even from primary school here today. I think she didn't want to burden others with her terminal illness. And in her way, she was secretly praying for a miracle. And so she became more and more insular as time went on. After convent, Kay attended and graduated from the University of Western Ontario in Canada and ultimately worked successfully at Lonsdale Advertising, where for several years she established her career and met Kenneth Atal, Siobhan's dad. Kenrick, I think you know that Kay admired you as a father, not only to Siobhan, but to all of your children. You and my dad have showed your steadfast and unwavering dedication to your children, and I want you to know that we have been blessed by it. Kay enjoyed her work at Lonsdale, and through it, I had a unique opportunity to travel uh, to Europe with her together uh, in the summer of 1985. We spent two weeks in Paris, Nice, Rome, Geneva, and there are many, many stories to tell. She enjoyed traveling, and she enjoyed traveling overseas. Her last trip took her to Greece, a lifelong dream, another one fulfilled. Some years after establishing her reputation at Lonsdale, Kay decided to do something different, and she went back to books to study and become a certified events planner, a second career for her which she loved. She tried her hands at various entrepreneurial activities, but I think she really loved and found her vocation in event planning and made several more friends there, again, several who are here today. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Kay is traveling again. But this trip is the trip of a lifetime. In spirit, I believe that she has traveled to be with our two sisters, Alicia, the eldest, and Kathy Ann, the youngest. I can just imagine them now being together and preparing a place for when we, the rest of her family, join. What an everlasting, beautiful reunion that will be. I'll end this eulogy by urging you all not to be sad for Kay. I guarantee you that her soul is anything but sad. In fact, Kay will never again experience hurt sadness, or pain, only joy. Instead, when you think of Kay, let your memory of her drive you to be the best version of yourself. How do you do that? By doing what she did. Get to know Jesus, the Christ, as your Lord and Savior by reading his word and by praying to him, and by paying attention and being there and loving those around you, those right in front of you, those at the side of you. If you do this, the Bible tells us, and I'm convinced 
you will see K again. May K's soul and the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of Christ rest in peace. Amen. On behalf of Siobhan and the Maynard family, thank you all for being here in person and those of you streaming in around the world to honor and remember Kay. May the peace of Christ that transcends all of our understanding guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Hi, good morning everyone, Siobhan, dear family members, and all of Kay's dear friends who are here to celebrate her life. I am Lisa Faria, a lifelong friend of Kay Maynard. I'm here to pay tribute to Kathleen on behalf of her St. Joseph Convent alma mater students, as well as the University of Western Ontario alumni. And I know many of you all are here to celebrate along with me and her family members. Many people don't know this, but Kay and I actually shared a lot in common. Grew up as children in San Fernando, and even we shared quite a lot throughout our adult lives. We went to the same primary school, San Fernando Girls Government School. Big up to those who are here from primary school. We actually went to the same high school, St. Joseph Convent, San Fernando. Once again, big up to the convent girls. And then we actually went on to the same university, the University of Western Ontario in Canada. And as far as I am aware, Kay and I were the only two who share this similar educational journey. To add to those similarities, while we were in high school, we were often mistaken for sisters. I guess we shared a similar red girl resemblance with our light brown eyes and slim physique, but people would often ask me if I know Kay and vice versa, if we were sisters. We shared many of the same friends. We went to many of the same parties in San Fernando, and even our first time playing mass, we played together in Edmund Hart Band. We remained friends throughout our lives, and our children even went to the same primary school. Siobhan, you remember that, right? Bishops and St. Junior. And despite our busy lives, taking us in many different directions, our connected past always kept us in touch. So it gives me great pleasure to pay tribute to our dear friend Kay on behalf of her St. Joseph Convent alma mater sisters, as well as her Western University alumni friends. Kay graduated from St. Joseph Convent in 1978, and it is no surprise that she was also elected head girl in her final year at high school. And this is a testament and an early demonstration of Kay's leadership skills. Her passion for languages led her to study English, French, and Spanish at A-levels, and she continued on to university where she majored in English. I must add that it was also through Kay's encouragement that I too attended Western University. I will always remember Kay writing me from Canada telling me about how lovely Western campus was and all the friends that she made and how beautiful the campus life was. So, this is very true. Following on her recommendation, I joined her at Western in 1980, where we became roommates until she graduated in 1983. As a roommate, tell you a little bit about Kay. I must say that Kay was the only one of all, I think it was four roommates, who looked out for us. 
She took on her usual leadership but very nurturing role. She organized the cooking and the cleaning schedule. She made sure we stuck to our schedule. And if you know Kay, she made sure that that rent was paid on time. Always the more responsible one, Kay often opted to go straight home after class to study while we stayed on campus to Lyme. God bless her little soul, she was always very studious. But despite her motherly role in our household, Kay always found time to join in all of our Caribbean association, students' association activities, whether it was the parties, the sports events, or putting on, putting on cultural shows on campus. And it was during this time that she developed lifelong friendships with just about all of us from the Caribbean students' diaspora on campus. Later on in life, Kay decided to pursue her passion for event planning, as most of you all are aware, so much so that she achieved the certification and even lectured in event planning at the Arthur Lockjack Business School of Business. So armed with this knowledge and her passion, Kay and I would often talk about having a high school reunion for the graduation class of 1978. <clears throat> But I must say that it was Kay's initiative and her passion for event planning that eventually brought this uh, ceremony, celebration, sorry, to fruition. So in 2018, we celebrated our 40th year anniversary, the St. Joseph Convent Alma Mater, which was a huge success, reuniting many of us, as you could imagine, after 40 years, it's been a long time. Some of us haven't seen each other since 1978. And we were successful in rekindling old friendships and celebrating our lives and achievements. And this was Kay's joy. She always was rooting for her alma mater sisters. And one year later, in 2019, we have to also credit Kay for achieving the same success in leading the planning and organizing of the reunion of our Western University alumni, and this time it was in St. Lucia. A huge undertaking, but again, this was Kay's passion to bring all of us together. I sincerely believe that had it not been for Kay's passion to rekindle and reunite friendships made during our lifetime, none of these reunions would have taken place. I can say without contradiction that Kay was the glue that kept us together. She rallied us together on our alumni group chats long after the reunion and up until right just a few weeks ago, as some of you all would, would have seen. And she continued to almost daily put postings of birthday shout outs and other positive celebrations on the group chats. His presence in the world was a gift to all of us. I'm sure everyone here would agree and we would have had that privilege of knowing her. She made a profound impact on so many of us, leaving behind a legacy of love and inspiration. She was very giving, caring, dependable, and reliable. She never judged you. She was always fun to be with, and everything that you could wish for in a friend. Her spirit will forever reside within our hearts and our memory, of her will continue to guide and inspire us. She was very private and brave during her illness, always positive and saying that she was okay. Her courage and strength during this difficult time could only be an inspiration to all of us. Without her doubt, her strong faith in God allowed her to rally through her illness right to the end. So, on behalf of her high school and university friends, some of you are here and I know the rest of you are looking online. We want to say that we honor you, Kay, and cherish the memories you created with us and for us. May your beautiful soul rest in peace. Our tribute song, I believe, is a message directly from Kay, letting everyone know that she is well, she's healed, and she's very happy where she is. So if you would allow me
to speak on her behalf as I sing for you the song, If I Could, If You Could See Me Now. have all been answered I've finally arrived the healing that had been delayed has now been realized and no one's in a hurry there's no schedule to keep we're all enjoying Jesus just sitting at his feet if you could see me now I'm walking streets of gold If you could see me now I'm standing tall and whole If you could see me now You'd know I've seen his face If you could see me now You'd know the pains he raised You wouldn't want me to ever leave this place If you could only see me now My light and the temporary trials have worked out for my good To know it brought him glory when I misunderstood Though we've had our sorrows, they can never compare What Jesus has in store for us, no language can share If you could see me now, I'm a walking streets of gold If you could see me now, I'm standing tall and whole if you could see me now, you'd know I've seen his face. If you could see me now, you'd know the pains he raised. You wouldn't want me to ever leave this perfect place. If you could only see me now. could only see me now If you could see me now Good morning, all. My name is Teresa Awai, and on behalf of myself and the Red Cross Children's Carnival Committee, I extend my condolences to Siobhan and the rest of the extended family, relatives, close friends, and all of those who would feel the loss as I'm sure we are all deeply feeling on Kay's departure. I got to know Kay, we call her Kath, very late. She joined our committee of the, the planning committee and the operations committee of the Red Cross Children's Carnival, I think somewhere around the year 2008 or so. And compared to the rest of the speakers, I have formed the same opinion of Kay, we all did. My very first impression of her was, she is a lady. Kay had an insight that was remarkable. 
we planned our meetings um, about six months before the actual event, and we met weekly. So we would have started somewhere around August or September, and we met every week until the event, which was usually in either February or March. And Kay had a, a way of, she wouldn't jump out and speak, she would listen. And then she would come with an idea that is so out of the box, but so apt that it was always, wow, you know, she, she, she just could put her finger on, on, on that little bit that was needed to help us execute the Red Cross Children's Carnival. And she spent most of the day on stage, you know, helping the children on, guiding them when they go off and all of that. And she didn't look as though she bust a sweat at all. Very calm, very cool, very collected. So I have here a short tribute written by Mrs. Vindra Amar, who was the then chairperson of that committee in which Key helped. Kathleen, or Kat, as we fondly called her, was a member of the Red Cross Children's Carnival Committee for several years up to 2016. This committee raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for Red Cross projects. In addition to being very active and a vocal member in the planning meetings, she was a key official on the stage at the show, on her feet for more than seven hours, but always smiling and very smoothly managing the flow of masqueraders. We will miss this talented and very much lovely member of our committee. Rest well, dear Kat. Just in closing, I wanted to say that during the pandemic, COVID-19 pandemic, I, um, I worked at the Consortium of Disability Organization and um, the Immortal School for Special Children. And Kath called up and she said, T, she called me T, what you will need? And I told her. The very next day, she came with adult diapers, children diapers, deodorants, you know, things that people would not normally bring, you know, they would bring food up and so. And she called me every week, how are things going? You need anything? Let me know. And she would organize whatever it is, and she always dropped it in. And um, for this, I mean, it was so selfless. So dear Kath, thank you so much for your very sterling contribution to the Red Cross Children's Carnival and for your help during the COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, chapter 8, verses 31 to 35 and 37 to 39. With God on our side, who can be against us? Since God did not spare his own son, but gave him up to benefit us all, we may be certain, after such a gift, that he will not refuse anything he can give. Could anyone accuse those that God has chosen? When God acquits, could anyone condemn? Could Christ Jesus? No. He not only died for us, he rose from the dead, and there at God's right hand, he stands and pleads for us. Nothing, therefore, can come between us and the love of Christ. Even if we are troubled or worried or being persecuted, or lacking food or clothes, or being threatened or even attacked. 
These are the trials through which we triumph by the power of him who loved us. For I am certain of this, neither death nor life, nor angel nor prince, nothing that exists, nothing still to come, not any power or height or depth, not any created thing can ever come between us and the love of God made visible in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks. 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 with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. There are many rooms in my father's house. If there were not, I should have told you. I am going now to prepare a place for you. And after I have gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me. So that where I am, you may be too. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. 
This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please have a seat. Those who are wearing black remain sitting. Everybody else stand. I will say the English again. Remember, K majored in English. Those who are wearing black remain sitting. There are many rooms to my father's house. Many rooms. And if they were not, I should have told you. Well, you're supposed to wear colors, people. I am sure that is what I saw. Please be seated. Today we come to celebrate someone's life, not just someone. And there is nothing I can add to what you said. There is nothing. So there is no need for me to give a homily. So we will get on with the rest. But I will be doing the lady injustice. What did we hear of this amazing woman? That from her very beginning, from her very birth, from throwing the bottle out the window, from complaining, she was into broadcasting. She was into media. She was into event planning. And so, she planned this event. And why am I saying that she planned this event? Very simply, she loved her God. She trusted in God. She gave her life to God. She came here and received Holy Communion, understanding that Jesus Christ is the bread of life. Food for the journey. And yes... She was on a journey. She was on a journey that touched many hearts in here, touched many lives. She was an auntie, a mentor, somebody who was part of the Red Cross. She was part of family. And so she touched many, many lives. Whether she taught you all at the Arthur Lockjack, whether it was in advertising or just coordinating all of the alma mater events, she touched lives. And so when Jesus says there are many rooms in my father's house and he tells us that I'm going to prepare a place for you, he has prepared a place for Kay. And as her brother said, not suffering anymore, she's joyful. She lime in. She's probably organizing 2024 Kiddies Carnival in heaven. Yes, you all don't realize that. You know, but Jesus loved a lime. He loved music. He loved partying. And that's why he promised us that, yes, heaven will be like a banquet. A banquet. A lime. A get-together. I get together with her sisters, I get together with, I hope I'll be there one day. But if we want to get there, we have to follow key. She loved her God. She had strength coming from the grace of her faith. Do you believe? And what a beautiful month she planned to leave during the month of this sacred heart, where it's all about love, where it is about Almighty God loving us so much, opening his heart wide as she opened her heart wide. And she could say during the pandemic, what all you need. And Jesus is saying to all of us, what do you need? 
what we all need is love. That's it. And he just gave us two commandments. Jesus gave us two commandments to follow. To love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And to love each other. And so I want to share with her beloved daughter something that many people do not know. They do not know. You heard in your uncle's eulogy that long before you came into the world, your mother wished you here. She wanted you. And carrying you in her womb, she loved you. What you don't know. From years of psychology, we learn 65% of all children in the womb are not wanted, not loved. Well, you know why we're in this trouble? And so you're blessed, my beloved. You are blessed to have a mom that wanted you even before you came into being. Jesus says, before you were created in the womb, I knew you. And I loved you. And that's how much she loved you. You're in her DNA, and she is in yours. So when you want to see mommy, look in the mirror. Same red girl. She loves you. And right now you have an angel praying for you. Nothing can stop you. Just as Jesus says in that first reading, nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Nothing. And so nothing can separate you because she loves you. And that's what it is all about. It is all about love. So are you loving? That should be your mission. That should be the event that you plan for the rest of your life to love. And if you do that, then you know the way to the place I am going. Amen. Would you please stand? God the Almighty Father raised Christ his Son from the dead. With confidence we ask him to save all his people, living and dead. A beautiful Kathleen, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, grant that she may now be admitted to the company of the saints. Lord, hear us. Ah, for our beautiful sister, who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that she may be raised up on the last day. Lord, hear us. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness, Lord, hear us. For those who have fallen asleep, in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face, Lord, Hear us. And now we pray for the mourners, her kin, those who loved her, a beautiful baby girl, that you will be consoled in your grief 
by the Lord who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. Lord, hear us. And for all of us assembled here to worship in faith that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. Lord, hear us. Almighty God, you are our shelter and our strength. You listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers that we offer for our departed sister, Kay. Cleanse her of her sins and grant her the fullness of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you please now be seated? We do have a collection for the charity of her cause.
And so I invite you to stand. In this beautiful month of the Sacred Heart, Jesus invites us all to be family, to be family. There is no Catholic God. There is God. He created us all, every single one of us. And in this beautiful prayer that we are about to pray, regardless of your faith, you can pray this prayer. It is calling the father, daddy. So we are family. We are family. And if we could only live like that, this world will be a better place. So join me now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please. Share with one another a sign of peace. Make me a channel of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring your love. Where there is injury, your pardon, Lord. And where there's doubt through faith in you. Make me a channel of where there's despair in life, let me bring hope. Where there's darkness, only light. And where there's sadness, ever joy. Oh, Pastor Grant, that I may never seek. So much to be consoled as to console. To be understood as to understand. To be loved as to love with all my soul. in pardoning that we are pardoned, in giving to all men that we receive, and in dying that we're born to eternal life. O Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. My brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not, not worthy that you should, you should enter my under my roof, but only, only say the word, word my and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
De Deacon Lennox Toussaint will be distributing Holy Communion on my left, and I will be distributing Holy Communion on my right.
I invite you to pray. Please stand. Trusting in God. Trusting in God. We have prayed together for Kay, and now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting. But take comfort in the hope that one day we will see her again and enjoy her friendship. And although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon key in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us. Please listen to our prayers and open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and our sister forever. Amen. Please be seated. As part of our Catholic liturgy, I'm going to sprinkle the coffin again with holy water, reminding all of us of our baptisms where God washed away all our sins where we received the gift of the Holy Spirit, where we are all pledged eternal life. And then I'm going to incense the coffin. Why? Because all our bodies are temples of God to be kept holy, to be honored, to be loved. your servant in the sight of this world she is now dead but in your sight she will live forever and we pray that in your goodness you will grant her everlasting peace we ask this through Christ our Lord
as we gather, my brothers, as we gather, my sisters, to commend he to God. To commend Ki to the Father. To commit her body to its final resting place. In the spirit of faith and in the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Let us offer our prayers for our beloved sister, our friend, our mentor, our sister. Almighty God, you've chosen to call key from this life to yourself. And so we commit a body, for we are dust, and on to dust we shall return. But we know, Almighty God, that you will change our mortal bodies to be like Jesus' in glory, for he is risen, the firstborn from the dead. So let us commend key to the Lord that the Lord will embrace her in peace and raise up her body on the last day. When I am down and oh my soul so weary When troubles come and my heart burden me Then I am still And let us all bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. Bless us, Lord. Bless us as we journey through this life. Help us to learn that you call us to love. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. You are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry out to you in their need and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord. And let perpetual light shine upon her. Eternal rest grant unto key, O Lord. May she rest in peace. And may her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. And may the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And may Almighty God bless you. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Kay, Kathleen, may the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and lead you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. May the choirs of angels welcome you and lead you to the bosom of Abraham, and where Lazarus is poor no longer, my beloved. May you find eternal rest. My brothers and sisters, go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Save us.
Your praises, that's a better in my life. 